Well, good morning. Uh, join me here in the north of the Outer Hebrides again. Um, it's a pretty grey day. So I think today's video is really going to be about what can, we, what can we do on days like this? Is there something to photograph or is it a complete waste of time? Should we be at home or in the hotel processing or reading a good book or planning where we can go on a better day? The landscape does what it does. We're getting some light rain, very flat grey skies. But there is a very subtle beauty to this as well. And it's a case of exploring the possibilities uh, rather than um, giving it all up and forgetting about it and going back and sitting in the car and making coffee. So one of the big things about this type of photography and the thing I want to raise first is when you come to a virgin area like this, the tide is coming in and there's still a few footprints dotted around the place. When we got to the beach this morning, there was already footprints here. On a falling tide, you're going to have virgin sand. There'll be no footprints. And one of the key things, particularly in this little uh, river outlet here, is there are no footprints in the water, in the patterns, around the rocks. So you have to be incredibly respectful because you never know where your composition might be. And if you stomp all over it, then of course you're going to ruin potentially what was going to be the best shot of the entire thing. So I think one of the best things to do here is to examine what elements we have available to us and try and work this out. Um, it's all well and good to try and teach the intuition of recognizing a good shot when you see it. But in reality, that's something that takes sometimes decades of practice is to just walk up somewhere and see compositions. A lot of people have to work at it, they have to look at the elements. So what we have here is we've got some quite nice red rocks in the foreground. There's a gentle kind of curve in the water there. Um, there's some quite nice patterns in the sand and there's sort of a transitional zone of lighter sand where the water is flooding it and it's getting you know, that transition zone between the sea coming in and the sand. So there's a few elements that I think we can explore here this morning. And um, I haven't quite found anything yet that's ringing the bells, uh, so I'm going to keep looking. Uh, so yeah, bear with me and we'll see where we go. So after a bit of a look around, I've kind of decided that this rock in the lower right hand side here the curve of the river and then the sort of gentle curve of the sand i'm going to take this before the tide comes in yeah so the gentle kind of curve of the sand there with the water running around it the tide's coming in there's a bit of a surf i've gone with a two and a half second exposure here just because I want the ocean probably to be a little bit less dominant. There's not a lot of texture in this foreground water. Um, and with the shutter speed, what I'm doing is I'm actually seeing the patterns underneath the water more than the surface. I'm using my case uh, polarizer here to uh, take the shine off the water. And you can see how the tide's starting to come in now. This is going to become quite a dynamic transition zone between this curve and the water itself. And it might actually develop quite nicely. There isn't going to be any light. The color palette is muted and really quite pastel, or pastel if you're in Scotland. There's a slight greenish teal color in the water. There's a warmth in the, in the sand here, but it is quite a muted color palette. The preview on the back of the camera is subdued and, and quite you know, low in energy, which you would expect in this type of day with flat light. But there's a simple elegance to it. Um, it's, and it still represents a moment that I'm enjoying being here, you know, regardless of the weather. I'll tell you any day of the week, I'd rather be stood out here uh, in a slight drizzle than sat in my office. Um, hour after hour, day after day, week after week, and I'm sure many of you can relate to that. People who have office jobs or long hours jobs, 
manual jobs, any sort of, you know, we all have to work for a living. And to be honest, there's nowhere better I'd rather be than right here, right now. So the landscape is always going to be what it is. And it's up to us to accept that, see it for what it is and not wish for god beams or golden light or a beautiful sunrise. You know, that's just not what's going to happen today. And I don't want to be miserable and I don't want to regret the decision to get out of bed to come here. I'm enjoying listening to the sound of the surf. So this scene here, there may be some interesting possibilities in processing. We don't want to oversaturate. We don't want to over exaggerate. It's a case of how can we work with these elements to create something a little bit interesting, perhaps. So what we'll do is I'm going to try different shutter speeds, see what would happen if I go with a longer shutter speed, you know, maybe half a minute or so, really smooth out that transition, lose the detail, all the detail in the water, and just see what we can do with that. So let, let's try that. So that 30 second exposure has made a massive difference. You can see the ocean now has created this much more blurred and ethereal uh, side of things and the water has smoothed out massively. Um, we've lost all the texture in the surface of the water but we're still seeing the contrast, we're still seeing the colour, we're still seeing the patterns underneath the surface and I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's starting to, to look like a photograph, very ethereal, very calming but there's a richness in the colour of the rock juxtaposing with the colour in the, the water or the, the bed of the stream and then the actual surf line. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. Now the keen-eyed amongst you will notice that I've got a different filter holder with me today. This is the new Case Armour system, which is a combination of a traditional uh, slotted, or a, the, the idea of a slotted filter holder uh, with a magnetic system. So as with many of the Case systems here, we have a, a 77, variable, this is a 77 to match my lens, 77 screw on, uh, there's a circular polarizer in the back which is typically rotated using this wheel, nice and big, easy to use with gloves, but instead of having the traditional two or three slots at the front for the square or rectangular filters to slide in, this one has the magnetic slot there where we can just pop in, this is a three stop, so these are actually 90 five millimeter magnetic filters. So these also work natively on my Tamron 150 to 600 lens. I can just use the magnetic filters to snap onto the front of the regular holder. But this is the one I'm using now. And instead of having a, a grooved slot, this is magnetic. And I'll show you later on how to use with the graduated filters. They come in a little magnetic holder. You slap them onto the front and you can still lock them down so that they are very, very solid. Um, I'm enjoying it. I've only had this a couple of weeks. Case sent it over to me. Uh, they, they gave this to me to try. Uh, I haven't paid for it, but as always, I only recommend things I fully believe in. My first impressions are great. I don't have my old Wolverine uh, K9 holder with me. I'm only using this for the whole trip. So we'll see how it pans out. And just like that, one incoming wave has changed the beach. All the patterns underneath there have been washed away, that very delicate patterns that have built up over a number of hours. We now have a much larger structure and I will have to take a bit of the exposure off so I can drop this to about 13 seconds. I'll try another one. And what we're going to notice is that we've lost an awful lot of that delicate pattern underneath the water we're going to end up with something um, probably a bit calmer maybe a little bit uh, easier in the eye um, because I'm just going to check yeah check the polarizer again but when I screwed the filter holder back on the, the polarizer was slightly unaligned now so try that again now with the polarizer and what we'll see here is how different that polarizer has on an effect uh, between this, this shot and the one before. The one before was unpolarized and is also very, very bright. The second one is polarized and is really quite dramatic. 
If there's any doubt in your mind about the power of a polarizer, you only have to look at this. This is an unpolarized uh, live view screen here. And if I just rotate the polarizer, you can see what a dramatic difference that makes to add, you know, we can see through the surface shine of the water now and take shots that are, have much more detail in them that shine on the surface of the water is always going to just reflect that light back and prevent us from seeing under the surface. And the difference, as we can see, we can see all of this lovely patination underneath there. And the bow waves are, they're kind of fairly nicely contoured. Uh, so yeah, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it, it, I think there's, there's an awful lot of delicate detail going on here but I will have a wee look around the tide's still coming in and I'll see what we can find if there's anything else around One of the things I've always loved about seascape photography, which is why I wrote a book about it, um, is the constant change, the constant sense of variability. This is just a little rock on the shoreline here. And when I got here, there were some quite nice patterns round about it because the, the, the sea had been out for a long time. Now what we're getting is this interaction between the water and this rock. And if we look at some of the shots that I've taken, some of them have very messy, foam and streaks of white foam round about that just generally look kind of chaotic and busy and somewhat unattractive. Other shots when the, I've let the wave come right in and then taken quite a long exposure, 13 seconds again, flooding out over it, you get this sort of rushing sensation of flow and so forth round the frame. The other big consideration here is when you're on a wet beach like this, really stuff your tripod down into the sand as hard as you can go um, because as the water comes up and round about it, it will start to sink um, and there's nothing worse than that beautiful composition with a little bit of creep so that the rock is no longer sharp. Um, this one here, I have some, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's not an amazing shot, but it's interesting. I hope you've enjoyed this little wander around this beach and the Isle of Lewis. The light is actually starting to improve somewhat and uh, it looks like the forecast for the rest of the day is, is going to improve, although the wind is going to be increasing. You can already probably hear it's maybe a bit blowy. Um, I'm going to pack away the vlogging gear now and just immerse myself in this place. Otherwise, my entire experience here is just going to be one of making content for the YouTube channel which I very much love doing, but at the same time, I need to have this connection with the landscape and some time here to really just immerse myself in the pleasure of being here. So forgive me for not sharing everything with you that I'm going to get up to this morning, but maybe if I do make some interesting photographs, I may show them at the end of this video in a little slideshow. As always, if you appreciate this content that we're making for you, hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up because that obviously helps the algorithm of death um, keep diving into our learning material, luminosity and contrast, the color of meaning and uh, the creativity superpowers which is all about composition by feel and finding your own voice in the landscape. 
Um, and of course, the Expressive Photography Members Channel, where you'll find like-minded people willing to help and give you great critique on your photos, plus some extra content that I make for there as well. Uh, well, from an, a rapidly improving Isle of Lewis, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Thank you.